as a child life specialist during this quarantine, during coronavirus, we have switched to telehealth, which means we are using um, a video platform to meet with patients. So this means that I set up a call and I'm able to video with the patient, um, parents, siblings, anyone who's around who wants to jump in. So obviously this is different than meeting with kids face to face as I'm used to being in their presence and being able to really interact with them hands on. However, on the videos, we are still able to interact and we're still able to play. Children are resilient and they will find ways to play in any circumstance. And as child life, that's what we really want. So even during these hard and strange times, we want kids to keep playing. And so if that means playing on the other side of the screen while I observe and comment to them, or coloring parallel to each other at the same time and just having conversations, or reading books that can help them identify things that they're feeling at this time. And some of these kids, they're still going through their daily hardships, um, like for small procedures at home, and I'm still able to do preparation and talk to them about um, how to be ready and how to cope. We practice coping skills. We practice things like mindfulness. This is one of the books I use like called Breathe Like a Bear, which has all different kinds of mindfulness activities for kids that are really great at helping them feel calm and focused um, and great for parents to help kids kind of lower some of that crazy, stir crazy energy they have right now. We definitely have a lot of families going through a lot of anxiety during this time. Although a lot of families in our um, situation feel they are prepared for this as they spend a lot of time in isolation because their children are immunocompromised. We have families that spend from about October till April in isolation as it is. They have um, limited contact um, and basically just go to hospitals appointments and school if they go, but some of them even homeschool during those months. So they are prepared, but the difference now is that their entire family's at home. So whereas it might've just been mom and child before, now it's mom, dad, child, and sibs, which can really kind of change that structure. Um, I'm hearing people say, you know, their child's usually really structured and they have a routine that they do and now because all these other people are home for the whole day, it kind of has thrown off that balance that they had. Um, so trying to adjust to that. And then there's other families who are not used to spending a lot of time in the home and they are usually so busy with school, work, after school activities. And so I'm trying to help support them by sending them ideas for routines and having a little bit of structure, but also reminding them that it's okay not to have a ton of structure at this time, that this is an anxiety filled time and also new territory for everyone. And so if kids have a little extra screen time, that's okay during this kind of um, environment. And some other things that are coming up are that some kids still need to go to the hospital and that's whether they need an emergency procedure and they need to be admitted to the hospital or it's because they have um, something like chemotherapy that they cannot miss and they need to continue going. So then the fear is I need to bring my child to the hospital and how do I safely do that without bringing them to con into contact with any kind of um, germs. And so we have families that are incredibly creative using things like shower curtains to wrap around their child's stroller to keep them safe, um, making homemade masks for themselves and their child, bringing extra clothes so that as soon as they're done, they can change out of them and have clean clothes on and then showering as soon as they get home. And just trying to support them and reminding them that this is what they need to do for their child and that you know, the team in their hospital and us um, in their community will help them 
find the best ways to keep their child safe. Another thing we ha are seeing is we still have parents working in the healthcare system. These are parents who are serving as nurses and PCAs and have to go into the hospital and some are even taking care of patients with COVID-19, which is really scary when you know that you are coming home to immunocompromised child. And so we are trying to remind them that they are doing the best they can for their family. They are taking every single precaution, which that means wiping themselves down completely before they leave the hospital, changing their clothes, not touching their child until they've showered and feel they've been able to kind of rid themselves of anything they've come in contact with, or even kind of limiting their contact with their own child and also limiting the help they usually have. So a lot of our families have nurses and different therapies coming in, and now they're not getting any of that because they don't want any extra people coming into their home, um, not knowing where those other people have been and what they've been in contact with. So now we have parents who are having to do round the clock care um, where they usually have assistance with things like that. So it's it's a very new world for everyone, no matter what kind of situation they're in right now.